This video concerns proportionalism and the ethical approach of Bernard Hughes. Proportionalism is a modern version of natural law. It is a Christian approach to ethics, and it developed because some Roman Catholic theologians felt that there should be a middle way between the deontological aspects of natural law and the teleological aspects of situation ethics. Natural law is often characterised as a strict set of rules concerning right and wrong. Proportionalism follows this, but it also allows for circumstances where right or wrong depends on the situation. Natural law was developed by St Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century and rests on the idea that we can derive our moral actions from what we can know about our divine purpose. As beings created by God, we can discover our purpose from thinking about how we were made. This leads Aquinas to five primary precepts. Preserve life, live in ordered society, worship God, educate the young, and reproduce. From these, we can always derive a secondary precept that will show us how to act. For example, we should not harm others, since we should always preserve and respect life. The Roman Catholic Church has tended to interpret Aquinas' natural law very strictly, so that there are some acts which are always wrong, even if they are done with good reason and loving intention. Situation ethics was developed in the 1960s by Joseph Fletcher as an alternative Christian ethic. Situation ethics is a very teleological outlook and based entirely on agape, the Christian word for self-sacrificing love. As a teleological ethic, situation ethics is concerned with the consequences of actions, so that a good moral action is one which is likely to bring about the most loving consequences. In a similar way to situation ethics, proportionalism suggests that the morality of an action cannot be judged without considering the intention, situation and consequences of an action. In other words, an event or action is seen as non-moral or pre-moral until we take into account the involvement of a moral agent or a person in the situation. This leads to the idea that proportionalists come to accept as three kinds of evil. For the proportionalist, there is pre-moral or non-moral evil, ontic evil, and moral evil. Pre-moral evil consists of breaking a key moral principle. Ontic evil describes the unavoidable suffering which comes about just because we live in an imperfect or fallen world. Moral evil describes the kind of evil which moral agents, people, have a duty to avoid. Premoral evil, then, is simply any act which breaks a key moral principle. Such acts are a matter of sin and are frequently the cause of suffering, usually to others, although they could be any act which causes distance from God. In identifying premoral evil, the proportionalists see this as the pure act before a moral agent is considered. Premoral evil is judged as evil before the intention, situation or consequences are taken into account. For example, to deliberately cut someone with a knife is a premoral evil. It causes pain and it breaks a key moral principle. In this case, a secondary precept of do not cause harm is broken. Ontic evil is any act, event or consequence which causes suffering, but which is simply an unavoidable reality of living in an imperfect world. It is ontic in the sense of ontological, concerning the nature of things, the way things are. The movie Babe comes to mind as the pig comes to learn that pigs are reared to be eaten. He is told it is the way things are. The nature of the world we live in means that evil, as suffering, is an unavoidable fact of life. The pain of childbirth is a good example of this ontic evil. For example, sometimes a surgeon must deliberately cut someone with a knife. We saw this as an example of pre-moral evil. Ontic evil is the unavoidable suffering that a surgeon must cause in order to heal someone. It's simply the way things are. Moral evil describes actions which are carried out by a moral agent, but which are still regarded as evil when the intention, situation and consequences surrounding the act are taken into account, 
even allowing for the fact that there will always be ontic evil in the world. All moral agents have a duty to avoid moral evil because it is always possible to avoid moral evil. It is not always desirable to avoid pre-moral evil. It is not always possible to avoid ontic evil. Some things are just not our fault. However, moral agents must accept that they are responsible for moral evil and they should always work towards moral good. In our example, the surgeon carries out an act of pre-moral evil, but because ontic evil is an unavoidable reality of the world we live in, her actions are not in themselves morally evil. The intention, situation and consequences mean that the surgeon's actions are morally right. Following on from these definitions of evil, Bernard Hughes makes a careful distinction between a good act and a right act. Hughes notices that the language of good and evil becomes very imprecise when scholars try to discuss evil. In pre-moral or non-moral evil, the word evil means an action which breaks a key moral principle, which is evil but might not turn out to be morally evil. In ontic evil, the word evil simply means unavoidable suffering. So when it comes to defining moral evil, it looks like it is possible to do good whilst committing evil as long as the intention, situation and consequences make it good. In order to overcome these semantic challenges or these difficulties with the meaning of evil, Hughes makes a clear distinction between a good act and a right act. The way Hughes sees it, doing a good thing is not the same as doing the right thing. The fallen nature of the world means that doing the right thing may be the best we can hope for in any situation. An example of all this might be the business of going to war. Following the thought of Thomas Aquinas, Roman Catholic ethics has always respected what is known as the just war tradition. This is the idea that going to war can be just or justified, even considering the importance of the preservation of life in Aquinas' natural law. For the most part, a nation can be justified in going to war if its intention is to protect innocent life. Using Bernard Hu's language, however, it is never going to be a good thing to go to war, but sometimes it might be the right thing. War will never be a good act, but because of the unavoidable reality of ontic evil, it could be a right act. For Bernard Hughes, a good act is one which follows a key moral principle and is performed out of love for God and God's law. In an ideal world, we would always only do good acts. However, since we don't live in an ideal world, sometimes we will have to settle for a right action. A right action goes against a key moral principle, but this is done for a proportionate reason. It is important to stress that proportionalists would not go against the key moral principle lightly. As far as possible, the key moral principles must be followed, and these include the five primary precepts from Aquinas' natural law, as well as the Ten Commandments, which Aquinas finds belong to divine law. As Bernard Hughes stated, it is never right to go against a principle unless there is a proportionate reason which would justify it. Finally, then, we come to the word proportionate, which is obviously central for this development of natural law we call proportionalism. Doing the right thing requires a particular type of proportionate reasoning. In following proportionate reasoning, we must, firstly, weigh up the foreseeable consequences of a particular action. Secondly, we must balance the value and the disvalue of the act. Thirdly, we must be confident that the value of the act will outweigh the disvalue. When it comes to deciding value and disvalue, it is a simple matter of positive and negative outcomes from an action. Value refers to the increase in positive results and decrease in negative results from an action. Disvalue refers to the decrease in positive results and the increase in negative results from an action. For example, in deciding whether to support a war, we might have to balance the positive results against the negative results. Positive results might arise from protecting innocent people from an invading army, whilst negative results include the use of violence towards the invading army. The value of going to war is protecting the innocent, which increases positive results, and preventing oppression by a foreign army, which decreases negative results. 
The disvalue of going to war is the use of violence, which increases negative results, and the breakdown of peace talks, which decreases or interrupts positive results. Weighing up what to do in a given situation is an accepted part of proportionalism. We have to weigh up what to do using our instinctive knowledge concerning the value of our actions. At the heart of proportionalism is the acceptance of the way things are. A proportionalist maxim or central principle might be, it is never good to go against a moral principle, the deontological rules of natural law should be obeyed. However, in some circumstances, it might be right to break a moral principle because evil is an unavoidable reality in our world. There must be a proportional reason for breaking a moral principle. Our actions must be carefully balanced, well-reasoned and proportionate. Proportionalism finds that agape, the Christian principle of self-sacrificing love, is a guiding principle for good. Remember that proportionalism comes from some Roman Catholic thought in response to situation ethics. As agape is so important within the teachings of Jesus and St. Paul, it is very significant for proportionalists. In proportionalism, an ontic good is also a moral good if it is done with a loving intention. In fact, Love should be the primary intention for all good acts. However, only proportionate reasoning can make an action right. Some loving acts could be ontic evils. For example, we might, out of love, want to keep a pet alive at all costs, even if, in doing so, we prolong the animal's suffering, which is an ontic evil. Proportionalism has not been entirely welcomed by the Roman Catholic Church. Pope John Paul II stated that proportionalism is wrong on the grounds that it denies that an action can be intrinsically evil in and of itself, regardless of the intention, situation or consequences. This may be seen as surprising since there are elements of proportionalism in the ethical thought of Aquinas. In his natural law, Aquinas is aware of the importance of intention in a moral act. Aquinas doctrine of double effect relies on the intention of the act in deciding whether an act is moral. In addition, Aquinas teaching on just war accepts the reality of war and teaches the importance of a proportionate response in war.